Well, sir, Mr. Victor Gook has just arrived home from the office as we enter the small house halfway up in the next block now. It's late afternoon, and he's in the living room with his wife and young son. We judge that complete happiness does not prevail. Listen. But that sounds dangerous. Dangerous? Chances are I'll get killed. Well, do you have to do it? Well, Bull is my superior in the company. When he issues an order, it behooves me to carry it out. Here's not the reason why. Here's but to do and die. Not the size of it. He's going to throw a bag of golf clubs at you? From a train going 60 miles an hour at midnight. And you're supposed to catch him? I'm supposed to catch him. Ridiculous. Yeah. I'd tell him to go jump in the creek. <laughs> Let's see the telegram once. It's in my coat pocket. Where's your coat? I threw it over a kitchen chair when I come in just now. Want to trot out and get it with him? The code or the telegram? Telegram. Okay. I think I stuffed it in my inside pocket. Uh, I don't really get the idea of this yet, Vic. Oh, it's simple enough. Yesterday, I talked to Buller in Chicago long distance. We discussed some business, and then he told me he was leaving tonight for St. Louis and would be back through here day after tomorrow. Suggested a game of golf. I said, fine. He said he'd bring his golf clubs. Is that much clear? Yes. All right. This afternoon, I got this telegram. Buller wires me. He figures it'd be silly to log his golf course uh, clubs clear to St. Louis and back. He suggested I stand on the depot platform and he'll toss them to me as the train goes past. The train don't stop? I <laughs> don't say the train don't stop. It's a Missouri flyer. Roars through town 60 miles an hour. Darn golf clubs would knock a person down. Darn golf clubs would knock a person into the middle of next week. I bet Buller's golf bag weighs 40 pounds if it weighs an ounce. He carries 19 sticks. They're all big babies. Well, no telegram, Dad. Sm- what? No telegram. Did you look through all my pockets? Yeah. I must have left it on my desk down at the office then. I think I can just about quote the half-wit thing. All right. Uh... See no point in carrying golf clubs to St. Louis and back. Suggest you meet Missouri Flyer and take a position on the depot platform to catch them as I go by. I will be standing in the front vestibule of the third car from the end. And depending on your skill as a catcher, because my golf bag is a new and expensive one, and I wouldn't want to get it scratched, Bullock. <laughs> I doubt if Babe Ruth could snag onto a bag of golf clubs under them conditions. Mm. How much you figure they weigh? Mm, 35, 40 pounds. He's got a putter as big as my foot. And this is tonight at midnight? Tonight at midnight. It'll be dark. It'll be dark. How are you going to be able to distinguish which car is the third car from the end? I don't know. Missouri Flyer goes through town 60 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> the train will be clear past before you can even start counting the third car from the end. Uh-huh. You'll just have to stand there and wait till you see a big, heavy object come hurtling through the darkness. Mm. I don't think you got a chance of catching it, Doc. Neither do I. Is Mr. Bullard all there in the upper story? Well, you know he's eccentric. From some of the stories you told me about him, I'd say using the word eccentric was stepping on the soft pedal. Mm. Like the time he pulled his own tooth. Mm. (laughs) What was that, Ma? Oh, he was on the train going someplace and got a toothache and borrowed the conductor's ticket puncher and yanked out his sore tooth without turning a hair. That is generally considered an example of courage and manly resourcefulness. Maybe so, but it sounds crazy. Mm-hmm. And like the time he insisted on paying a quarter to ride on the merry-go-round when the admission was only a nickel. Well, mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I call using the word eccentric stepping on the soft pedal. Fuller is a man of quick and decisive action. He don't fool. That's why he holds the responsible position he's got. Are you going down to the depot tonight at midnight and let him throw 40 pounds of golf clubs at you? <laughs> I think I'd better figure out some way to get out of it. I wouldn't want 40 pounds of golf clubs to come hurtling through the darkness at me. See, Sadie, his original idea is sensible enough. He's going to play golf here in town with me day after tomorrow. Since he's traveling through town tonight... Why should he lug his golf clubs clear to St. Louis and clear back? I don't know, I'm sure. Why should he? Probably he didn't give the matter sufficient thought. Probably if he'd considered a little longer, he'd have realized he was asking a very difficult thing. Requesting a guy to attempt to catch a 40-pound sack of golf clubs from a train moving at the rate of 60 miles an hour in pitch darkness. 
As Stone Bruce here points out, I won't know when to expect the third car from then. Well, if you did know, would you get in front of those golf clubs and try to catch them? <laughs> no. You'd be smashed to a pulp, wouldn't you? I expect I'd be severely injured, all right. Well, I think you'd be instantly killed. Look once. The train's going to be traveling 60 miles an hour. That means the golf clubs will also be traveling 60 miles an hour. Probably they'll be going faster than that when they leave the train because Mr. Boyer's going to throw them. Or, say, 70 miles an hour. <laughs> I challenge any human being to catch an object weighing 40 pounds moving at the rate of 70 miles per hour. It is ridiculous. <laughs> if you take my advice, you'll go inside the depot and crawl under one of the benches when the train goes past. I better telegraph Buller I'm sick or something. My stars, yes. Staying up till midnight for any such crazy business. Mm -hmm. Another thing, Gov, you might get arrested. Why? They got a policeman patrolling the depot at night. What's he going to think about a fella skulking in the darkness, attempting to catch a big heavy object thrown out of the train by a passenger? Mm -hmm. He don't think Jesse James and his gang are up to mischief again. Mm -hmm. Your wonderful Mr. Buller may be an important muckety-muck in the Consolidated Kitchenware Company, but he's certainly not so high and mighty he can ask fellas under him to risk their lives on account of wild foolishness. Well, he just didn't think, see? Well, then it makes me wonder how he ever got such an elegant position. He's considered a very capable executive. Mm. Well, I just thought of another way this could be handled. Uh -huh. I figured out how Mr. Buller could unload his golf clubs without throwing them off the train at you. Oh. Have a guy stationed at Joliet. When the Missouri Flyer roars through Joliet, Mr. Buller can stand in the vestibule and toss out one golf club and one golf club only. All right, so far so good. At uh, Braidwood, you got another fella stationed. Mr. Buller tosses him one golf club. At Gardner, you got still another guy stationed. He catches a golf club. Pontiac, the same thing. Chenoa, Ballard, Lexington, Tawanda, and Normal. See still? I see, Stu, and I feel constrained to compliment you on a very brilliant notion. <laughs> it's about as brilliant as Mr. Buller's notion, is I think so myself. My gosh, any lame brain ought to realize. Not five o'clock yet, is it, say? Five o'clock? Oh, no, it can't be. I'll call up the office and have Miss Hammersweet send a wire. To Mr. Buller? Yeah. One side, Aunt Marie. Oh. Always some happy thing to cope with, huh? Yeah. What Albert Tennyson says in I the poem. I must request silence, little doubt. Oh. Uh, 7900, please. Yes. You get the telegram in plenty of time. Missouri Flyer don't leave Chicago till 8.45 this evening. Oh. <laughs> Son of a gun bullet. Uh, hello, Alice. This is Mr. Gook. Yeah. Miss Hammersweet still there? Please. What time is it, by the way? Uh, 25 minutes till 5. We have to have things from the grocery store, Willie. Remind me to be sure and have... Hello a... there. Say, Miss Hammersweet... Will you get off a wire to Mr. Buller right away? Yeah, Chicago office. Tell him to see that he gets it if he's already left for the day. Yeah. Uh, impossible for me to meet train. Suggest you send golf clubs to me by express. Regards, Gook. Yes, read it back. Right. 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 Okay, Miss Hammerstreet. Thanks. Okay. Bye. All taken care of. Hmm. All taken care of. Yeah, seems like every single day something comes along for a person to cope with. Albert Tennyson says in his poem. Oh, what if I had loyally decided to follow orders? What if I'd actually resigned myself to a violent death out of a sense of duty? What if I really went down to the depot tonight and attempted to catch a 40-pound bag of golf clubs hurtling through space at 70 miles an hour? Hmm. <laughs> Hot stuff, huh? No, I still say using the word eccentric to describe Mr. Buller is stepping on the soft pedal. Hmm? Maybe so. Well, Dr. Sleech? Grocery store? Grocery store. <laughs>
which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. And here we leave, Vic and Sade, until the next time. You know, with summer on the way, your appetite just naturally turns to seafood. So I bet some crab meat croquettes have kind of hit the spot long about now, all crunchy brown on the outside and full of that wonderful crab meat flavor. Mmm, boy. And look, try those croquettes.